So by now you probably realize that alkanes are more likely to undergo radical halogenation with fluorine than they are with chlorine and in turn more likely to undergo halogenation with fluorine than with bromine and, and more, like, more likely with bromine than with iodine. So fluorine is at the top of group 7 on the periodic table. Chlorine is just underneath that. Then you have bromine and iodine. So we saw in a previous video that the reactivity to radical halogenation goes down as you go down the periodic table. So it's highest with fluorine and lowest with iodine. And we also saw that because tertiary radicals are more stable than primary radicals, when you react a, an alkane with, with multiple types of hydrogens, abstraction leading to the tertiary radical will tend to be favored. So tertiary is more favored than secondary, which is in turn more favored than primary. And we went over the example of chlorination of 2-methylpropane. So this is 2-methylpropane. And let's say you react it with Cl2. And remember, at room temperature, nothing happens. This, uh, if you just leave it alone, this mixture needs to be irradiated with UV light in order for something to happen. And when you do irradiate with irradiate the mixture with UV light, what you'll observe is a mixture of primary product, which is CH2ClC, and then you're going to have three CH3 groups attached. So, or, or sorry, you're going to have um, two CH2 CH3 groups attached and a hydrogen here. So basically, one of these hydrogens at one of the carbons is going to get replaced with the chlorine. And the other possibility is this tertiary hydrogen gets substituted with chlorine. So the other possibility we have is, is this molecule. So these are the three methyl groups and this hydrogen has been replaced with a chlorine and we saw that abstraction of uh, we we mentioned that abstraction of uh, this tertiary hydrogen is, is more likely than any of these primary hydrogens but we also have to take into account the fact that there are nine of these primary hydrogens whereas there's only one of this tertiary hydrogen so statistical factors lead you to believe that for every nine of, of, of these primary products, nine molecules of primary product, you're going to get only one molecule of tertiary product. Well, it turns out that you actually get, your, your product distribution is 64% primary and about 36% tertiary. So, what that means is that, well, your your primary, you're your, uh, you're getting a whole lot more tertiary product than statistical factors would lead you to believe. And just how much we just we divide the uh, we divide the observed yield by the expected yield. So 60, 36 tertiary for every sixty four primary divided by expected yield is one tertiary for every nine primary. So 36 over 64 divided by one ninth. So, oops, should be nine primary. 36, and don't, don't get these confused for numbers in the uh, fractions. This is just tertiary, primary, tertiary, primary. 36 over 64 divided by one ninth. That's the same thing as 36 over 64 times 9. You work out the arithmetic. This works out to about 5. So a tertiary hydrogen is 
five times more likely to be abstracted than a well, well, as five times as likely to be abstracted as a primary hydrogen. But remember, this is for chlorination. What about what about for different halogens? Say say we reacted two methyl propane with any of the other halogens, say fluorine, bromine, or iodine. Let's look at fluorine now. So if we took two methyl propane, that's this molecule. It can also be represented. It can also be represented this way. But there are three CH3 groups, so I'll just write it. Write it like this for convenience. So let's say you were to react it with fluorine. Well, what? Well, of course you're, you're going to need a. You're going to need to irradiate this mixture as well. And you'd expect here. You'd expect again statistically. There are still there are still nine primary hydrogens, nine equivalent primary hydrogens, and one tertiary hydrogen. So you'd expect statistically, without taking reactivity into account, that there will be nine molecules of primary substitution product for every molecule of tertiary substitution product. So primary substitution product here would be, I'm just going to write it out. 2F you'd think statistically it would be nine of these to one of these and it turns out that what you actually observe is very it's it's pretty close to this so it's 14%, 14% tertiary product to about 86% primary product. So how much, we can see 14 over 86 seems to be a bit bigger than 1 over 9. How much bigger? Well, let's look, 14 over 86 divided by 1 ninth. 14 over 86 times 9. Well, this works out to roughly 1.47. So, a in the case of fluorination, a tertiary hydrogen is only 1.4, only 1.47 times as as likely. Let me let me go ahead and I'll just go ahead and rewrite this reactant molecule here. Okay, so in the case of fluorination, this hydrogen is only 1.7, 1.47 times as likely to be abstracted by a fluorine radical as any of these other hydrogens here. And, and remember, in the case of chlorination, this was about five times as likely. Well, what about bromination and iodination? So reactions with bromine and iodine. If you work out a similar calculation for the bromine product distribution, you'll find that bromination strongly, very, very, very strongly favors abstraction of a tertiary hydrogen, much more so than even chlorination. And how much more so? Well, bromination favors. abstraction of a tertiary hydrogen 1700 anywhere between 1600 to 1700 to 1 relative to a to a primary hydrogen so if you were to take this molecule and react it with, say, bromine, this hydrogen is going to be 
anywhere between 1,600 to 1,700 times more likely to be abstracted, or I should say Br2, than any one of these hydrogens. So you're going to get 99% tertiary, uh, more than 99% tertiary bromination product and, and uh, less than 1% primary bromination product. And that's, that's even, even considering the fact that you have nine primary hydrogens that could be abstracted, whereas you only have one tertiary hydrogen that can be abstracted, you still get more than 99% tertiary bromination product. But then what about iodination? Well, iodine is, is the, the, ra the reaction is so endothermic that we don't, we don't even consider it as taking place. So this, rea this reaction here You see this reaction, you can just say no product. Because this, this reaction mixture will just sit there and sit there and sit there, even if you irradiate it with UV light. So we're just going to assume that it doesn't take place. In a previous video, we took a look at bond strength data and use this data to observe trends in reactivity of a given alkane to halogenation by various halogens. And we found that fluorine is the most reactive and iodine is the least reactive. So once again reactivity weakens going down the periodic table. I think I said this earlier in the video. But in this video we also found that selectivity weakens going down the periodic table. Remember fluorination here favors favors tertiary 1.47 to 1 and this th these numbers are all with respect to primary hydrogen. So fa and in a uh, 2-methyl propane you only have tertiary and primary hydrogens. Now chlorine favors tertiary, and th this is, ab when I say favors tertiary, I mean abstraction of it. So favors tertiary, I should say tertiary H abstraction, and here chlorine, chlorine favors tertiary hydrogen abstraction about 5 to 1. Bromine favors tertiary abstraction about, I don't know, 1650 to 1. Iodine doesn't react. So we can see that selectivity goes down, going down or goes up going down the periodic table. So bromination is the most selective. And I, did I say, did I say goes down earlier? The reactivity goes down going down the periodic table, but selectivity goes up. So it seems like the more exothermic the reaction, and by exothermic I just mean the more readily it occurs. Because remember, this is, this is the most reactive fluorination is most reactive and this is the least reactive in fact it doesn't occur and reactivity goes down but selectivity goes up here so I'll, I'll just write here uh, this uh, chart's getting kind of busy, so here uh, I'll just write here up selectivity. So as you go down the periodic table, you get you get more you get more selective. Uh, this is just bear in mind that selectivity 
selectivity goes up as you go down the periodic table. So selectivity seems to go up as reactivity goes down. Or said another way, endothermic processes tend to be more selective and exothermic processes, which are more reactive processes, tend to be less selective. But why is this? And this is exactly what we're going to take a look at in the next video.